Thank you, uh, Mr. Secretary. We're now going to begin our uh, questions, and I'll uh, start by recognizing myself. Uh, Secretary Becerra, uh, our communities continue to struggle with the opioid crisis. In, uh, I, I cited the statistics in my opening statement, um, but uh, as a reminder, in 2022, um, uh, 108,000 Americans died from a drug overdose, a record high. Um, we've seen the opioid epidemic uh, transform over the years. When I first was elected to the Senate, uh, it was primarily an epidemic of prescribed uh, uh, opioids. Um, and uh, then we saw some shift to use of heroin. But now with the emergence of synthetic opioids like fentanyl, um, we are seeing uh, an increase in deaths um, among individuals, particularly youth, who don't even know that they're taking fentanyl. Uh, with fentanyl, one pill can kill. How does the HHS budget address the devastation that we're seeing from opioid-related deaths in our communities? Madam Chair, Madam Chair, I, perhaps the most important thing is that we recognize, as, as you just mentioned, that it's a shifting, shifting landscape. And so the some $9 billion that the President's budget has to address drug overdose and the opioid addiction are really targeted on things like fentanyl, on trying to make sure that we give states the capacity to help their young uh, populations avoid uh, overdose. And it makes sure that we're providing the harm reduction to make sure that people don't accidentally kill themselves when they think they're doing something that is recreational. And so of the $9 billion, it should surprise you that, it should not surprise you that uh, more than a billion and a half is going to state opioid, uh, uh, resource grants that will help states decide how they can best tackle the opioid crisis, especially among uh, children. SAMHSA, our agency that administers most of our substance use and mental health programs, is going to receive about four and a half billion dollars of the nine billion because they're the ones that work closely with state mental health uh, programs throughout the country. And so it is letting the states have the flexibility and the resources to tackle this crisis. Um, I want to dig a little bit deeper here because, as I mentioned, many times uh, uh, teens will take a pill that they got from a friend or got online unaware that it's laced with fentanyl. Um, I've heard from uh, so many parents in the state of Wisconsin who have lost a child to fentanyl poisoning. Um, the budget proposes substantial funding for treatment programs. Um, which is certainly incredibly important for tackling this crisis. But how is HHS working to prevent young adults from using, uh, and children, from using drugs and making these deadly mistakes in the first place? Madam Chair, we, we did something at the federal level that had not been done before. We, we stopped relying on stigma to drive our federal policy. So today, we actually support programs that offer fentanyl strips to individuals so they can find out if the drug they might be taking is laced with fentanyl. That way they don't kill themselves. We also made naloxone far more available. So today you could have access to naloxone in public places so that if you see someone who's overdosed, there's a great chance that you might save their life by administering naloxone for them. And so we're also trying to make sure that local communities understand what they can do to make that naloxone more available. So whether it is naloxone, fentanyl strips, clean syringes, we're now using uh, the evidence-based programs that have shown success to drive our policies. Thank you. Um, I want to shift in, uh, uh, in 2018, I worked to pass legislation requiring HRSA to identify areas with critical shortages of maternity health care professionals so that we would have uh, evidence to support increased investments in areas where women and families need providers the most. Unfortunately, the number of maternity care deserts nationwide continues to increase, and over two million women live in a county without a hospital, birth center, or obstetrics provider. The decision overturning Roe has made this problem worse, as states with abortion bans have seen a drop in applicants for obstetrics and gynecology residencies. 
Given our nation's unacceptably high rates of maternal mortality, we must do everything we can to target investment to increase access to care and support the maternal health care workforce. Secretary Becerra, what is HHS doing to build the professional the workforce pipeline and better support our maternal care professionals? Madam Chair, there are about $8 billion that are dedicated in this budget to trying to address maternal health. Much of it is focused specifically, about $400 million is focused specifically on trying to tackle the maternal mortality and morbidity rates that we see in some of our communities, especially the black and Native American communities. We're trying to make sure that we get to women before there's any chance that they would have complications in their pregnancy. And as you know, as a result of our efforts on Medicaid and your support, we now are able to offer a woman and her baby not just 60 days of maternal health and child care after, after delivery, not just 60 days, but 365 days of care to, for mom and baby so they can make sure they're gonna start with a fruitful life. Thank you. Uh, Senator